My name is Paulette Lynch and I'm the Executive Director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. And so I get a really great bird's eye view of what's happening in the arts today and a good sense of what has happened uh, in this region even from as much as a hundred years ago when so many artists, poets, and writers were attracted to how exciting, beautiful this area is and many were somewhat propelled out of the San Francisco area, particularly visual artists uh, after the fire in 1906. But so many more were lured here by the air and the, the natural beauty and the chance to, to be together in this great setting. I have been the executive director of the Arts Council for Monterey County since 2004 and we have the great opportunity to see the arts come alive in every region of our county. Most people are so familiar with what's happening in the Monterey Peninsula area, particularly they think about Carmel and the wonderful galleries that are there and they think about Ansel Adams, Edmund Weston and some others who came to the area and became really famous. But there's also so many things that are happening throughout the region from King City where there's a new gallery exhibition and performance space called Soul Treasures. In East Salinas there's the Alice Al Center for the Fine Arts where so many things are happening. Hartnell has a wonderful theater that's called the Western Stage. There's just myriad opportunities now throughout the county for art to be created, for art to be presented, and for art of every discipline to be learned. And still many of our artists and producers and presenters, musicians, are making it to a national stage. Fran Spector Atkins just created something called Ocean, and it's going to be a very multidisciplinary, multifaceted experience centered on dance with a lot of other things included. She just got a National Endowment for the Arts grant to continue producing that, to take it really, I'm, I'm sure it'll go national, maybe international in its overall impact. If you look, for example, in the Alicel area in East Salinas and you see Jose Ortiz and you see his murals, he's working in the, the Mexican tradition of these really big, important murals that are rooted in history but, but go much deeper emotionally. His work can be seen all over Salinas and he continues to develop new, younger artists in his group and he's in very, very high demand. It's just really wonderful to see. I have the fortune of being at the Sunset Center in Carmel. My little office is right there. And so just right now, I'm hearing all the wonderful sounds of the Carmel Bach Festival. The Carmel Bach Festival and the Monterey Jazz Festivals are the biggest, most internationally renowned that we have in our area, pulling people, including musicians and travelers from all over the world for over 50 years. Both the Jazz Festival and the Bach Festival are not just traditions for a lot of people. They, each year they're gaining more and more people as they become more involved in educating the public, reaching out to young people, doing all kinds of things to uh, keep their music and their interpretation of music and the people that they attract as players to, to new heights of, of energy and creativity and innovation. It's really very, very exciting to, to see that, how that's developing. One of the most exciting developments for our region is the selection by Philip Glass of his new festival called Days and Nights. Philip Glass is an amazing composer. Some people might recognize his work from the film Koyana Scotsi. That was probably one of the most famous, but he's done so many different things for film for theater. It's really amazing to me that somebody of that international renown decided to select our region for his new festival. He will be performing. He'll be performing in a number of different settings, but he's also bringing in others, uh, dancers and poets and other musicians to create a wonderful experience for people that'll last a whole week in Carmel Valley, in another gorgeous setting. He was attracted in part by uh, friendships that he had developed with Magnus Torrin at the Henry Miller Library, which is right on the Big Sur. And a couple of the performances that will happen as a part of that whole Days and Nights Festival will happen at the Henry Miller Library. So it's, it's just really a lot of wonderful things coming together. And I just feel that Monterey County has this wonderful energy. It's not just something that happened 100 years ago. Some people came and thought it was great. It, there's current excitement around creativity, 
generally, but really wonderful performances, interacting with people, training people, getting them to a whole new stage in their own work, and then sharing that more broadly. Not everybody is as much of a fan of the arts as I am. I get that. But they, they, that's how they think of themselves initially. But when you are able to get them in to the theater and you get them into a museum and you get them into a gallery, you, you get them somehow together and uh, help them experience something that they're already interested in in terms of the subject matter, all of a sudden now they realize, well, they really do love music. They do love theater. They love being in a space where they can feel something new and look at something new and think differently about just almost anything through the eyes or with the assistance of, of the artists. And I think that, uh, to me, that the Museum of Monterey is really well along that path of finding new ways to connect to the public. That will reverberate throughout our community uh, among the people who come to Monterey County and then also be inspiring, I think, for a lot of others in our region. And so I just really, I just really have great feelings about the whole, the whole process.